Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Luke chapter 1, verse 11, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10, and Philemon chapter 1, verse 10. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord God, for your word. Thank you for actively pursuing us and helping us to actively pursue you daily. Lord, we love you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. So Luke chapter 1, verse 11. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. All right. And so we know that the altar of incense represents um, the fact of intercession, right? Of uh, We know that the first altar um, represents the atonement right? And the second altar represents the intercession and prayer. So as Christ was um, killed for us, that is what atoned for our sins. And then the second altar, um, like where would be like the Holy Spirit's intercession, Christ as a Holy Spirit and Christ as our intercessor intercessor before God, right? And so um, here, the uh, you know, when they would offer incense, that would be a pleasing aroma to God, right? That is without sin. And then so also we know that um, Christ, um, when when we pray, um, our incense arise to the, our our prayers arise as incense before the Father, right? And they they come before Him as an aroma. And so um, here, this is talking basically about the intercession of God and being in the presence of God, right? It says, and there appeared to him an angel of the Lord. And this is Zechariah um, when he was the high priest and he was going before the Lord and he, in the announcement of John the Baptist was being made. And so this is the angel of the Lord that was standing before him. And it says, there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right right side of the altar of incense. So Christ is making intercession for us actively day by day. Um, he wants us to be able to enter in and go before the father. We are all considered priests um, that the Lord says in the Bible. And, and, you know, Christ is our high priest and he is in there making intercession for us. When we come before the throne of God, we can expect to have God's presence there with us, right? And, and him caring about us. He's talking about a point of contact. He's wanting us to make contact with him. Um, ask for help. Um, we have an intercessor and we're about to enter into the presence of God. Amen. All right. And so Hebrews chapter two, two verse 10 is the second um, verse that he gave me for it was fitting that he for whom and by whom all things exist in bringing many sons to glory should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. So, um, why do we need intercession? Well, because we live, right? And we suffer through this life. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Sometimes there's sickness and health and, and sometimes it's not, right? And so because of that, we needed an intercessor who had experienced a range of things. We needed an intercessor and an atoner who would go through all of these different flexes of life and be able to successfully navigate it, right? And so because of that, he could impart righteousness on us. It says, for it was fitting that he for whom and by whom all things exist, right? Because everything was existed, you know, through Christ, he he created the world. Um, and so it says, for it was fitting that he for whom and by whom all things exist in bringing many sons to glory should make the founder of their salvation perfect, through suffering. So it was through suffering that we are perfected. It is through suffering that Christ was perfected. And so because of that, we can suffer through our issues of this world and, and we can have an intercessor. We can suffer through our, our daily lives and, and the group 
and the and the knowing that okay we have a heavenly place and we can get to that pursuit and 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 pursue it every single day because we have an intercessor who's been through that for us right we can pray it can rise as a sweet aroma to God and Christ is also praying for us making intercession for us amen all right. And so the third scripture that the Lord gave me was Philemon chapter one, verse 10. I appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. All right. And to, so this is Onesimus. He was the, um, he was the servant of Philemon and somehow they had fallen out and he, he ran away. Um, and so, um, here he's with Paul, right? He didn't just run away and and run away and pursue his his life, right? He he was with Paul. He was with a man of God, and so um here Paul is making intercession for him. And how is he making intercession in his own suffering? It says that it's in his own imprisonment that he is writing to Philemon. It says, "I appeal to you for my child." So this is just like Christ appealing for us, right? Before the father, how does he appeal? Because of his suffering. It says, I appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Paul is focused on someone else, even while he is in prison. He is focused on, on pursuing peace, right? We we heard earlier today that um if we are believers, if we are wise brides, then we are pursuers of peace. We are peacemakers. We are blessed because we are peacemakers and, and we are the sons of God. And so in the same way that Paul was a son and he was appealing um, for peace between Onesimus and Philemon, he is also making intercession, right? Even in his suffering. Um, and so, because if we suffer with Christ, then we'll reign with him, right? So always pursue peace, always pursue righteousness and know that Christ is, is intercession, interceding for you. He didn't just atone for your sins. He is interceding for your situation, right? He knows about what you're going through. He knows about your daily struggles and he is praying for you. He is right there with you. He knows the power of prayer, right? God knows how to wrap you in prayer. He knows how to suffer with you alongside you and say, hey, I got this. Come on, let's go. You know, God is right there with you. As I struggle, sometimes I just I just can sense the presence of God. You know, sometimes at one point I was praying, I saw God reach his hand out for me. And I just put my hand out by faith that I was grabbing his hand. Sometimes you need to, by faith, just allow God to enwrap you in prayer, envelop you in prayer, make intercession for you. You can even ask him, even though he's already doing it, you can say, Lord Jesus, please pray for me. I need help. You know, he he doesn't let any cry go unanswered, right? He even answers for the cries that don't even have words, right? So so he can hear you. He's making intercession for you. So make intercession for somebody else, just like Paul, right? Um, Paul stood in the gap for Anisimus, um with Philemon. So if he can do that, then we can stand in the gap for our brothers and sisters who are needing peacemakers in their lives. Stand in the out for someone help them um pursue peace and and ask god to how can i help someone else lord i i see that you brought me through these situations of suffering so i want to help someone else and and maybe so the holy spirit will show you someone who you can help as well amen but just know that your suffering is producing character and god is doing something in you he has an intercessor interceding for you about your case about your situation amen all right you guys let's pray Thank you, Father God, for showing us that you care. Thank you that we're going to enter into your presence. Thank you for intercession for us. We love you. We praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. 
Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he wants you to do just that. He's going to do just that. One of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down, read his word, chew on his word and talk to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So begin to seek his face today while he may be found. Also, one of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another so that we could stay sharp in the word of God. Um, go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around, and then also go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.